the documentary Athlete A came out on Netflix and I remember we was all just kind of watching it at home and just thinking, gosh, like some of this stuff is really similar experiences to what we've been through. So our thought process behind it was for us to just speak our truth and just kind of say our experiences to hopefully push the sport in the right direction. And the majority of the responses were really positive. Um, I mean, the repercussions for us afterwards were pretty challenging, I can't lie. People weren't very, being very nice to us after that. They were making our lives quite difficult, telling people not to work with us because we were basically just gonna try and ruin other people's careers in the sport. And it was just, it was just getting very messy and a lot of it just took a beating on my mental health. So I definitely had repercussions coming off the back of it, but like, I'm so happy now. I wouldn't really change where my life's going. So I'm definitely no regrets in doing it. Today we're joined by former gymnast Ellie Downey. Now she's won European gold. She's also got two world championship bronze medals and recently was awarded an MBE for her services to gymnastics, but also to gymnasts. Ellie, good to have you with us. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me today. You are more than welcome. How is life treating you right now? It's good. It's very busy. I feel yeah. like I'm a bit here, there and everywhere with everything at the minute, but I kind of wouldn't have it any other way. I like being super busy and just doing stuff all the time. So Good. And I'm pleased that you could squeeze us in. <laughs> um, now, we just touched on it in your intro. You have recently been awarded your MBA. You're picking it up next week. Mm -hmm. Super exciting. Congratulations, Thank firstly. You. Feels like you have done so much to get to this point. So what does this kind of accolade mean to you and to your sister as well, Becky? Yeah, I think it means just everything. Like when we spoke out a couple of years ago, just about the abuse stuff in gymnastics, it was a really tough decision to make. And we undenied whether it was the right thing or not so many times and just thought we had nothing to lose. And I think that was kind of the main reason why we've been awarded our MBEs. And for me to have got it a year after I've retired as well as kind of crazy because I never thought I would get one in the first place and I always thought if I would get one it would be because of an Olympic medal or something like that so just kind of having it for services to gymnasts and to the sport of gymnastics is yeah it's pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. It's amazing. I've actually got to this one and we've only started the podcast just now. But um, what's really special is that latter part as well, is your services to the individual gymnasts, the people that you were speaking out on behalf of as well. Because at the time when you and your sister did speak out, you two were the only two still competing. Yeah. And actually, I'm sure so many people are so super grateful for all the work that you've done, but you had to go against the grain, like majorly. Mm -hmm. What was it like back then? I mean, it was a really strange time anyway. We were really in the midst of COVID and the documentary Athlete A came out on Netflix and I remember we was all just kind of watching it at home and just thinking, gosh, like some of this stuff is really similar experiences to what we've been through. So our thought process behind it was for us to just speak our truth and just kind of say our experiences to hopefully push the sport in the right direction. And I mean, it definitely is going in the right direction. I know they've put a lot of rules in place now about weighing gymnasts like under a certain age and they can't do that and gymnasts can't come out of school um to like go to gymnastics when they're I can't remember the exact age right now um but there's a lot more rules in place just to like help children be children for one as well as do a sport that they love and I think just knowing all of this is kind of happening just makes me feel so much happier because the sport is amazing and I've never not want people to get involved in it but it was a hard decision to speak out because you don't want to talk badly about the sport that you're currently in but at the same time you can't ignore stuff that had gone on as well so yeah it was a really tough decision to kind of speak and like I said I'm super glad I did because there's just so many positive changes now and um, there's still a long way to go but there's definitely plans in place to keep it going so. When you did sort of come out um, what was the response to that like was it all positive because that's like such a big thing to do and mm -hmm. quite terrifying so what was like the feedback and the response to it? I mean the majority of people were just very grateful for us doing it I mean you obviously get the odd people online that are like oh they're only saying this because of so and so and they've not had this and they've not had that so but there's always going to be people yeah. like that like the majority of the responses were really positive um I mean the repercussions for us afterwards were pretty challenging I can't lie which was one of the reasons why I kind of retired because it was just 
yeah, pe- people weren't very being very nice to us after that. They were making our lives quite difficult, telling people not to work with us because we were basically just going to try and ruin other people's careers in the sport. And it was just, it was just getting very messy. And a lot of it just took a beating on my mental health. So I definitely had repercussions coming off the back of it, but like, I'm so happy now. I wouldn't really change where my life's going. So I'm definitely no regrets in doing it. So, I mean, the changes that have come within uh, British gymnastics as a result of what you and your sister um, as a collective have done are so amazing. But also I don't understand how it's even got to this point, why that wasn't a thing before. It's actually kind of shocking, which is probably why they, you know, didn't want anyone to speak out about it because like you say children should be children and and you started gymnastics when you were incredibly young Mm -hmm. so what was your experience like growing up firstly you know who inspired you to get in into gymnastics you know how did that even uh, cross your path obviously your sister was involved um and what was your experience like in terms of you know being weighed and all those kind of pressures that were put on you so young yeah it was, it was a weird one for me. Like I got into gymnastics, not because I was necessarily inspired by anyone. It was pretty much because Becky did gymnastics and um, I got put in it and I was just pretty talented from a young age. Got selected for a national squad when I was eight. So I was on the national squad from when I was eight till I was 23. So wow. it, was, yeah, it was a long time. I was like, you retired young. I'm like, girl, <laughs> I, was, I was working for when I was eight. <laughs> so yeah, um, it, was a, it was a long time and... Like I said, you're in the sport from such a young age, like, and I think that's where the lines just get very blurred between how much coaches think they can push you or not push you. And I guess you're in the gym almost more time than you're at home as well, in a way, because my schedule when I was younger would be like a 7.30 start in the gym till about 9.30 or 10, go to school all day, then go back to gym. And then you'd get home at like half seven or eight o'clock. So really you've got like, a two hour window at home, but you're in the gym more time than you're at home. So then the coaches almost feel like they're your parents in a way and you're spending so much time with them. They just think they can kind of tell you what to do all the time, think they can weigh you, think they can tell you what to eat and really like they're trained to be gymnastics coaches. They're not nutritionists. They don't really know like the correct things to be telling children. And especially when you're so young, like I was getting weighed from like the age of eight like literally from when I started national squad. But I think it just had such a negative spin on it because when you're a gymnast, you're always getting told to be as light as you can be as well. And I kind of understand it in some aspects because you're pounding your body so much. The lighter you are, essentially, the less of a beat in your body's going to take. But also you've got to take into account everybody's bodies are so different. Like, and I think that's what they didn't do. Like I was always like one of the heavier gymnasts on the squad, but I was by no means never not performing because of it. But I think they would just use that against me a lot and be like, oh, you're getting injuries because you're too heavy or just silly things like that. And I'd always get given very extreme weight targets to lose like six kilos. And like, yeah, it was just very unhealthy from a young age. So it's taken quite a lot for me now to just kind of get to a point where I'm comfortable with my body and like just appreciate it for what it does and I felt like I could never really be like that whilst I was doing gymnastics because I was always just told I was too big and I was too heavy like regardless of the performances I was kind of doing um so I think now that I've like stepped away from it and also I'm like I'm in the PT and fitness industry so I just really appreciate just moving my body every day and just being able to do the incredible things that it does and I think just when I was a gymnast I couldn't appreciate that because I just had so many people telling me it wasn't good enough all the time which when I look back that's the part that makes me really sad because I'm like I was so incredibly fit I was doing the most insane stuff on an international stage competing for my country like making people proud but that was like one of the only things they could see so that just makes me really sad and especially like coming from adults as well when you're talking to girls like under the age of 18 like you just need to be so so well even people over 18 you've got to be so careful with what you're saying like I don't think people have a right to tell you you're too heavy like there's different there's ways to go about it and I just think they never went the right way about it with me so I can't even imagine being in that situation being so heavily scrutinized like to that extreme Mm -hmm. like 
I'm, you know, kids can be horrible if you're at school. Like some people might make comments about people's weight or whatever. That's my memories of like growing up, but not being in a class where you're kind of all weighed up against each other, constantly like looking over your shoulder or being given weight targets. Mm -hmm. Were these ever like given to your parents? Were they ever involved with any of this? Or? Um, I think that was the wrong thing about it. Like they would sometimes be given to our parents, but most of the time it would directly go to you first. And yeah. I remember when I was about 14, we were on like a training camp in Barcelona and uh, we were having meetings with our nutritionists and stuff like that. And it was just you and the nutritionist in the room. So for a start off, there should have been another person in the room. Like it shouldn't have just been one adult and one child. And she basically told me to take pictures in my underwear to basically, so she could see progress. And I was like, that's so wrong. And like, I came out of the meeting and I said, luckily I had Becky on this training camp with me because I didn't tell anybody else. I was like, oh, like, have you been asked to do this? And she was like, no. And I was like, oh, okay. So then that just makes me feel very singled out as well. And then I go home and tell my mum, obviously my mum was absolutely fuming. Um, so she had a meeting with the nutritionist and the pictures never got sent, but they should not be asking you to do stuff like that. Like number one, I'm on a training camp in a different country. Number two, you've not got another adult in the room. And number three, you're only telling one gymnast out of the whole squad to do that. Like, so like all of these things just add up and add up and add up. And I don't think they realize what it does to you. And I don't understand how they don't realize. Cause like, especially now that I coach people like PT and, and stuff, even if I'm ever asking for progress pictures, I always make sure they're comfortable. If they're not, then they don't like, so to tell a 14 year old that they have to, it's just, it, it blows my mind, but yeah. I was just about to say, how old are you? That's yeah. crazy. 14 <laughs> years old. Mm -hmm. And also you're so young at this point, you don't actually know that being in this room is probably a, not right. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, and, and I think that's the thing about it as well. Like you're getting sent on these training camps and your parents are trusting the coaches and the professionals that they're doing the right thing. And just things like that are so incorrect. And I don't know how they didn't really notice that. Um, and I'm lucky that I've got a parent who will not just be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to go with the flow because that's what it takes to kind of be an Olympic athlete. Like my mum would always put her foot down and stand up for us. So I'm so grateful for her for that because she's just been awesome throughout it all. So oh, I bet she is so <laughs> phenomenally proud of you, though. <laughs> like what you've done. And obviously Becky's still, you know, hoping to get to the Olympics this year. Mm -hmm. And she's still so immersed in that world. And obviously you announced your retirement last year. At the time, you know, when you were both so heavily involved with it and maybe some of the former gymnasts were coming to you and saying oh we really want to speak out you know where 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 was the point where you said we've got to do this you know because you're so immersed in it your dream is to be competing yeah and it's such a huge you know organization British Gymnastics like what was the catalyst how did it all come together it was a weird time we were in Covid and that time just gave everybody a lot more time to think about things and I'm a massive overthinker as it is so um before we put it out, I must have gone back and forth a million times before we did it. And I was also a little bit naive as well. I kind of didn't think it'd have any repercussions because we're literally saying the truth and this happened. So mm -hmm. nothing should really come from it, right? You should be listened to. And yes, investigations might happen, but at the end of the day, we're never going to lie about any of this stuff. Like that would just be bizarre to do that. Um, so when we did it, I was like, only good can come from this, surely. And obviously, massive, masses of good has come from it. But then for us, just the implications in and out of the gym were just so much. It just took a huge, huge, huge bat battering on my mental health. Like, just every time you'd walk at, into a national squad, people wouldn't want to speak to you. But I remember the first national squad I walked into, um, it obviously was a weird one because it was COVID. So it was a very, very short squad. Um, but I walked in and I literally said hi to one of the national coaches and they just looked at me and walked away. They didn't even say hi back. And I was like, okay, this is how it's going to be, I guess. Oh and it was just like, you could just feel the tension in every room that you kind of walked in, like nobody wanted you around. And it was just 
an awful atmosphere to be in and like even just talking about it now kind of gives me goosebumps because I'm I'm very far removed from it now so it's kind of hard to like think back to those times and think how people were actually treating you and people were telling like professionals not to work with us because we were going to try and ruin their careers and it's just like you know we weren't trying to do that like we didn't even like name and shame people really which we could have like we just kind of said our experiences because we wanted to make the sport better it wasn't kind of like we want to go after these people and we want to ruin their lives and take them down it was it was never a thing like that and I think everybody just took it quite personal like that which it just wasn't that wasn't the intention so it feels like they were probably kind of institutionalized and you know all reading from the same hymn sheet as it were and like yourself I would think the exact same we're just going to say our experiences and you know and um, just shine a light on this and hopefully yeah. change positive change will happen and everyone mm-hmm. will be really grateful and we'll all kind of come together um, and make a difference but then you realize there's people in the sport probably that have been doing it for years and years and years and they don't mm-hmm. mind how things work. Yeah. They think that is how it should work. Yeah. And I think like I think it's the same in a lot of sports. Like people learn from the best. And if that's how the best are doing it, then it just gets passed down and passed down and passed down. And everybody just thinks it's normal. So in a way, I get it. Like I I don't get why people treat people like that, but I can to an extent because they're like, this is what it takes to be the best and especially because in gymnastics like the Americans are the top ones and the Russians and the Chinese were for so long they were just trying to do what they were doing but it doesn't mean it's correct by any means so although with all that going on do you actually miss competing um I do miss the competing side of it like competing was definitely the most fun part for me like the training I kind of loved the build up to competition but like the competition was always the highlight for me just going out on that comp floor showing off like all your hard work and nailing a routine like that's what I miss and like when I go and watch competitions I'm like like I do miss that part like I'm gonna go watch the British champs in a couple weeks and I know I'll probably come out like yeah I can get back into it and then the day later I'll be like no forget it (laughs) but yeah that's the part I miss for sure what was your highlight in your career, do you think? What do you look back on? I know there's a lot of negatives, but there must be a, a lot more positives mm-hmm. as well that yeah. you've experienced. I'd probably say my 2019 World Vault medal was definitely a massive highlight. Um, it was probably one of the things I never used to really say what I wanted from competitions. I'd always just go in like, I want to hit my routines and do a good job. But everybody knew I was going into that competition for that vault medal. So there was loads of pressure on me that year. And... I kind of messed up my all around competition, but still made the vault final. So it was a big build up to that day. And Becky actually had her bar final on the same day as well. But thankfully my vault final was first. So I could get mine out of the way and then watch her. Um, But yeah, I went up and I went up first in the final, nailed both vaults and then just had to sit and wait for everyone else to go until I just scraped third. So yeah, it was an awesome feeling and I'd just worked for it for so many years and I'd never had that was my first individual world medal we'd had the world team bronze but I'd never had an individual one um so yeah that was pretty special and then Beck went and did her bar final got her first ever individual world medal so that day was pretty pretty cool I bet there was a lot of celebrating yeah yeah Yeah, we were in Germany as well and I think um what's the festival that's on in Germany every Oktoberfest yeah it was Oktoberfest, so we were having massive steins after it. It was so oh, good. Amazing. <laughs> I would have loved to have been there. Like, fly on the wall. It was a good guys. celebration. Yeah, sounds good. But like that must have been so validating as well, especially when you've just touched on how tough times have been with your mental health and what have you. It kind of feels like everything, those sacrifices all are worth it in the end. Yeah, definitely. Like, I kind of look back at my career now and feel extremely grateful for all of it. Like when you're in the moment, you don't really take in any of the competitions. It's just one after another after another because we have a Europeans and world champs every year. And then the year of the Olympics, there's no world champs. So there's always two massive majors in a year. So it's just back to back to back all the time. And I think now that I've stepped back, I kind of look back and think, gosh, like all of that work was definitely worth it. And I learned so much about myself and like it's definitely made me the person I am today and I think all the struggles that happened and all the good that came from it it's just made me a stronger person yeah absolutely it's given you those tools to kind of implement into your next chapter Mm -hmm. of your life but what are your feelings on that how much time that you did dedicate to to this thing Mm -hmm. I think in the moment like when I was younger I always used to kind of 
like I always loved gymnastics, but I always did want to like go to those kids parties and have fun and all those stuff that you kind of missed out on like every Friday night, people would be hanging out, whereas I'd be in the gym and every Saturday morning I'd always be in the gym. So you'd really only get Sunday to kind of spend with friends. But then I don't know, I kind of look back at it now and just think I just had a different childhood and I still made friends through my sport. Like I got to travel the world and go to countries that people would never even dream of going to with my best friends and got to compete at the same time. Like, it's pretty freaking cool. Like, I don't think I'd really look back and think, oh, like I wish I'd gone to uni and I wish I'd just like gone out and boozed all the time. Like, that's just, like, I do like a booze, but I also just, <laughs> like, I also just like to work hard as well. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't think I look back and think I would have had it any differently. I suppose as well, it's a bit more special that like you're going through it with your sister as well, Becky. So. Mm -hmm. During those times when it was a lot, I bet, did it make it easier that you both had each other to lean on? Definitely. Like, as soon as I stepped onto the senior kind of international scene, every competition I pretty much did with Becky. Yeah. So I could always go to her for advice and be like, like, there were so many times at competitions where, um, I don't know, like I'd have like a minor injury or something. I'd be like, oh, I'm not sure if this is going to be all right today. And she's like, you're fine. You've got this. Well, like instead of like sometimes when you go to your teammates, it's just not quite as comforting. Or if you go to yeah. your coach and they're like, you'll be fine. Whereas like knowing that like a family member is there all the time for support. It's yeah, it's pretty special. And you touched on it earlier, but you have obviously retired now. How did that decision come about, especially after everything that you had to go through during COVID? Yeah, it was a, definitely a hard one. Um, I just had a really rough few years. Um, obviously, COVID happened the year after COVID. My brother had passed away um, due to a heart condition that we kind of didn't know about as well. So that obviously really messed with my, my mental health too. Um, and I think that just kind of shifted my perspective on life a lot more as well, because I'd been quite unhappy for like a good year and a half and when he passed away I was like gosh like it's such an awful thing to say but like I kind of imagine like imagine if I'd passed away and I'd been unhappy for the last year and a half of my life like that's just awful so it kind of gave me the mentality like I just need to try and be happy every single day and I had a big break from gym I think I probably took like a month or two of just going in the gym when I kind of felt like I could and if I didn't then I didn't go in um had a holiday and then kind of got back from that holiday and I was like right I want to give it like one last try and then really pushed hard and then I snapped my plan to play um at the start of January 2022 so then I was just like any more punches want to be thrown at me right now so then I pretty much just rehabbed that and got back and like again I wasn't in the gym loads so I was pretty much going into the gym to do my rehab and then I'd go home because I was just so kind of mentally done um and then again had another holiday came back and I was like one last try like I'm gonna give it one last try um and then I trained for our world championships trials and again was just having quite a few issues with national coaches like again them not wanting to work with me so I just really tried to brush like everything that happened to the side made sure I was having meetings with them all the time just making sure I was doing everything I could to kind of be on that team um and then they were like I was only doing three pieces. I didn't want to do all around. So I was like, I just need to kind of focus on a little bit less just to kind of get back into a flow. Um, and they were like, if you come top three on the events that you're doing, like you'll be selected for these worlds. So I was like, cool, we've got it in writing. We're ready to go, going to do it. Went and did it at the trials, came out absolutely ecstatic. So I was like, oh, I just feel like I'm back. Like it was just good to get a good competition under my belt and do what I needed to do. And then two days later, they announced the team and I was reserve. So I was just like. What more can you do? Yeah. So I was like, this is like just not going to change. I don't think I didn't feel like, well, firstly, I didn't want to keep putting myself in these situations that I found it really mentally challenging to be in because I didn't feel like I was kind of wanted there until I was like, why would I do that to keep not getting selected? <laughs> like what, what's the point? Like one, I'm wasting my time to our funding kind of works off like medals and stuff as well. So I was like, if I'm not even going to get put on these teams, all my funding's going to do is decrease. <laughs> so that was a factor. And three, I was just like, I've kind of just had enough of them controlling my life. Like I just, everything just felt really out of control and I felt like I had no grips on anything. So then I was, I was pretty mentally 
done after that. Like, I think I didn't get out of bed for like three days and I was living on my own at the time. So I had no one to kind of like, just be like, come on, like get up. And my coach was amazing. She was like messaging me every day. Like, do you want to come into the gym today? And I was like, no. And I had a bit of a bad ankle at the time. So I was just trying to rest that. And then like a couple of weeks later, we went to a national camp and then I just broke down and cried and was like, I need to go home. And then that was it. And I was just like, I don't want to, I don't want to go back in the gym again and took time to just kind of be in my own headspace and make sure it was the right decision. Cause every time I asked someone what they thought it would just make me think something different. So I just journaled a lot, like wrote everything down and kind of was like doing loads of pros and cons lists and like, where can I go? And I knew I was like wanting to go into the fitness space when I retired anyway. So I kind of just low key started that and like kind of see how I liked it um, and just kept it really low key. And then just was like, right, I'm just, I'm, I'm done. Like there was just no desire for me to get back into the gym and train that hard again. And like, I guess I still kind of feel like that now. Like I enjoy going to the gym, but I don't desire to like push my body and be in pain, like how we kind of were doing all the time. So I know it's the right decision because I don't miss that part of it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a tough decision to make. There was a lot of factors. 